I don't want to do the show, a watered down version of the show. So I gave an interview to my hometown newspaper and said I quit. That's and, very admirable. Though. MTV said you what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was the craziest thing you, you think you did as a kid, even if it wasn't a stunt? Like, For example, I'll tell you something that we did. Um, me, my cousin, <laughs> and my friend, we did a parody of Jackass when we were like 15. And we went to the local park and we wrapped twigs and nettles and we were slapping each other. Twigs and nails? Uh, no, like so, so, <laughs> sorry, my, my accent here is, is terrible. I'm from Norfolk, which is like a country part where you probably right. know where Norfolk is. Yeah, but you're a goddamn hillbilly. Yeah, pretty much. Me pretty, too. Pretty much. Um, yeah, no, nettles, like stinging nettles. Oh, um, right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, round okay. twigs. And we slapped each other and it lasted for about two minutes. I think one of us cried and went home. Did so, you slap each other on the bum? We did. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your British accent? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's as good as it gets. It's not like it. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. But I guess um, I guess a follow-up question from that is I think everyone, Stevie, our generation, even even over here, like globally, copied Jackass and like tried to be like you guys. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we couldn't do it. Does that ever Did that ever worry you at all? Like people at home copying the, the stuff? Yeah, stars? of course, because we had some copycat incidences and where kids would get hurt. And that's what we didn't want. Right. I mean, we say don't try it at home, we meant it because we don't want anyone to get hurt. We want to get hurt for you. <laughs> um, the Actually, the copycat incidences led to the downfall of the TV show. We were only on the air nine or ten months filming the TV show, and then there were some copycat incidences. And it was an election year, and a senator named Joseph Lieberman, his, his platform was Be Tough on Hollywood. Oh, wow. So, he came down on the network, the show, and me personally. Um, and MTV, you know, it's a big, you know, they're part of a big corporation. So they felt like they had to do something. So we got an as- a OSHA guy uh, assigned to our show telling us we can't jump off, off anything any higher than four feet. Four feet? And, yeah. And it's like, wow. do you know what we do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so by the third season, which was, you know, they, they, MTV ordered the show in, uh, blocks of eight. Yeah. And they call that a season. Right. But it happened within nine or 10 months. It was very hard to do the show and Jackass is silly and absurd and, and dumb, whatever mm. you want to call it. But it means something to us. And yeah. it's like, we I don't want to do the show, a watered down version of the show. So I gave an interview to my hometown newspaper and said I quit. That's and very it, admirable. Though. MTV said you what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> we were still under contract. Yeah. So there's a lot of back and forth. That's that's I, if you don't mind me saying, I think that's quite that's quite admirable though because I think like you am I right in thinking you were kind of just starting out on this journey back mm. then surely so a lot of people would have probably just carried on doing it under other people's terms just for the paycheck. Yeah, all we have is the truth on Jackass. Really, I mean, we have relationships, and which is a huge part of it. Our friendship mm. is probably the biggest part of it, and then we have all the stunts and pranks. But everything is real, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't want to give someone a half truth by doing a half ass job i mean how would you do a show jumping off of things four foot high that's and there's no there's like f- f- fuck it i quit <laughs> i'd actually do that yeah you could, yeah, you yeah, could, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> what was there a moment when you gave that interview saying that you'd quit that you thought that would be the end and it wouldn't be what it is now yeah i quit <laughs> you know yeah, yeah, and, yeah but then i think someone and i understand mtv's position right yeah uh it's a big part of a big corporation and since then, MTV, Paramount, we've all been great partners. Yeah. And, but like every relationship, you go through ups and downs. And um, someone, I think, from MTV Films, David Gell, suggested that we do a film. Right. And Spike and Jeff, to their credit, said, yeah, we should do a film. And at, my, at the time, I was like, wait, are we going to have people play us? What is, what is the film? And they're like, no, just do a naughtier version of the TV show. And, ooh, I like that. I, yeah. I, I know how to do that. And that's where Jackass was truly, truly just... It's bl- what it was meant to be, Yeah, right? Yeah. The TV show was fun and pretty good, but we really weren't so good at playing our instruments right. on the TV show. I, I, like, I remember, like, I was having trouble writing more ideas by the third season. Yeah. Because I was... 
like what is like I really hadn't landed on what it is. Mm-hmm. But when we did the film, like I and I think we got it and the ideas have been flowing. They they haven't stopped ever since. Right. You were telling me that you read that Johnny's the you can confirm if this is true or not. The first stunt you ever did, way before Jackass, was well, when you said. Am I right in thinking you shot yourself in the chest for a magazine article? Right, right. That was for Big Brother magazine. I was. That was one of my. I think that was my my entry into the stunt world. This that, is before Jackass. And right? It was like a participatory journalism type of article. Is my poor imitation of Hunter S. Thompson, right? Right. Because he would inject himself into the articles, right. like Hell's Angels. Yeah. And, but I mean, he got a book out of it. That, that's a. <laughs> I just got on basic cable. <laughs> <laughs> it's a high level entry. Like, why didn't you start by smacking sticks and stinging nettles? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, do you think you went too big too soon? Yeah, maybe. It's like, where do I go from here? <laughs> so, what was it? You were t- you were testing. I so, tested um, four things. I tested pepper spray on myself, a stun gun, a taser gun, and I shot myself in the chest with a thirty-eight with a honestly the cheapest bulletproof vest they made because I was broke at the time. And my mom gave me three hundred dollars for Christmas, and I took that money and bought the cheapest vest they made. I mean, I'm all for saving money, but I don't think you should be saving money on a fucking <laughs> no. I'm with you, fest. but you know, anyone who's going to do that is not thinking about that, <laughs> right? Right? Yeah, yeah. So, and, and, and where were you when you decided? To, what did you just get a gun and just one day? Right, I'm going to do it. Was it? Under I a... yeah. I mean, we we <laughs> planned a day to spend. I first shot the first three things. In my friend, beautiful Jason's backyard. Yeah. Because we could do the pepper spray, the stun gun, and the taser gun there. But we're in the city. So I didn't want to fire a gun off in the city with people around, neighbors around. So we just got on the freeway and ended up on the 14 in the middle of nowhere and pulled off, pulled off on a fire road. And I was like, okay, let's do it here because no one's around. And uh, There's no hospital around. (laughs) Except for some, like I was... I was getting ready to shoot myself, right? I was there with the gun. You're the first guest we've ever had on that said that. I was getting ready to shoot myself, and I got the gun out, and a car pulls up behind me down the fire road, and it's these group. It's this group of people, and I and they pull up, and I put the gun behind my back because I don't want them to see it and freak out. Fuck. And they're like, they were gacked on speed, like you can tell, and they're doing their job. They're like, do you know where the recycling center is? <laughs> I'm like, uh, yeah, just you know, go down here and take a left. I was just trying to get them out of there. Your Joe's doing the same thing. Yeah, that. and then they left. I got the gun back out and shot myself. How, how did it feel? It the the vest actually worked. It it dispersed the impact across my chest. Uh, I felt like someone hit you in the chest as hard as they could with a shovel, right? So it knocked oh. me back, but I didn't fall down. Fucking hell. It's, it's weird because obviously you, you've had a career and a lifetime of doing these stunts now. So uh, obviously you probably still get somewhat nervous and that. But back then it was like a boxer who had never been punched before, but going up against Tyson Fury or one of the greats. It's like when you're stood there. Tyson Fury is fantastic. Yeah, we love him. We yeah. love him. I mean, when he gets on the mic and starts singing songs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was not- watching one. Oh, uh, you... What's the Aerosmith song? Uh, I miss. Oh, you, I don't want to miss a thing. Is that like funny? that? He he got on the mic once. You think he's going to sing like one verse? He sang the whole fucking song. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm like, this guy is great. <laughs> it's, it goes on a bit too long, doesn't it? But everyone no, enjoys. No, no, it circles back around to become great. <laughs> right, it becomes okay. uncomfortable, and then it's like the commitment. You're like, this is awesome. <laughs> that describes your stunts, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> so you've shot yourself. Um, you must be nervous. Do you think in that moment, and also you're not doing it for a fucking movie, you're just doing it for, for like an article at this point. So if it, like, are you worried about death in these moments? Sure. You know, I was hoping the vest worked. Because, <laughs> you know, I, got, I started doing all this because my then girlfriend got pregnant and I had a daughter on the way and I'm like, shooting yourself seems like the right thing to do when that happens. That was my best guess, <laughs> right? I'm like, I got to make an impact. I got to do something and so I started, uh, my friend John Linson got me a job writing 
articles for magazines. He set me up with this editor and I was living next to Antoine Fuqua at the time. And he, he hooked me up with a commercial agent. And so I, I, cause I had been pretty lazy in partying up until that point with my five, six years in Los Angeles, I moved there straight after high school, mm-hmm. like a month later. Yeah. And I was halfway pursuing acting, right? Right. But I was really just kind of partying and not doing much. I think that's why most people go to university, I think, really, isn't it? They yeah. say they're going to study, but that's really... That's the only the... reason I went. Yeah. 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 So that was the impetus for me to, like, do something with my life. Right. And uh, it's odd that that was the choice. My father at Rolling Stone asked my, asked my dad, like, why does he... Uh, do what he does. And he's like, well, he's like that Dominican baseball player. He ain't going to get off the island by bunting. <laughs> but that, oh, that's not probably not going to play here because you guys don't know what bunting is, right? Nope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is, it, is it rowing? No, baseball. Like, oh. you know baseball? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> Fuck it. I like doesn't bother explaining it. You know yeah. you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> there must be something that would keep you up at night if you knew you had to do it the next day what's worse than getting in the ring with the bull <laughs> you know they want to kill you 